With its 2004 film Pixel Perfect, Disney Channel discovered its teen star du jour in Raviv Ullman, who was going by the stage name Ricky at the time in a move that greatly pleased Walt Disney, who even has a cryogenically frozen head still acts weird about casting Jewish people. Anyway, in this cerebral sci-fi adventure, Raviv plays a young genius who builds the perfect virtual hologram by meticulously judging and curating the physical features of the real women in his life, who he continually hurts and manipulates. Manipulates. And that's pretty much really how bad it is. I'm not exaggerating to sound woke, like when I rescued those 1,000 dolphins from SeaWorld who were also victims of gatekeeping and girl bossing. So join me in breaking down a movie featuring a love triangle so unbalanced that one of the girls just falls off the stage and almost dies at one point. Plus throw in a great original soundtrack, hallucinogenic visuals, and technology that quickly becomes more powerful than its human creators. Is this the start of the robot uprising? Because I already drank all of that canned pasta sauce that I panic bought during one of the other times society was collapsing. Oh well, warm up your vocal cords and stretch out those quads cause it's time for a sci-fi musical installment of Clip Breakdown, baby. <laughs> Hello television viewers, my name is Nick. Thank you so much for joining me once again on my channel for another installment of Clip Breakdown. This is the playlist where we dive into our favorite movies, TV movies, and other web content. And we break it down megapixel by megapixel to say, that's high resolution, good for my brain. Or that's negative, sad, that's such standard definition, dipshit nonsense that we need to get rid of it. And as we know, not all of our favorite childhood movies age well. And I'm afraid to say that's kind of the case with Pixel Perfect here because only 17 years old and this starts to feel pretty outdated in terms of like what it means when it's talking about physical beauty and what it lets its male characters get away with. But before we get into it, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up if you want to see even more clip breakdowns on DCOMs, Disney Channel originals like this. But most importantly, if you're new to my channel, I would love to have you click that subscribe button right over here. That way you never miss new videos from me. I upload two new ones every week, so turn on notifications and you'll always be the first to know when we've got a high resolution pixel to do on. Also, I've got merch available and a Patreon where you can access bonus episodes and virtual watch parties and such. Right off the bat, this Disney Channel original movie is setting us up with some familiar tropes. A genius kid getting ready before school. A lot of exposition in the form of video chats. We love it. We live it. We get into it. Roscoe, we've got that mad scientist look. I thought you liked that look. Only when we're planning something together. Why do these teenagers have the sexual tension of those two office workers with troubled marriages? She just popped up on that screen with a cigarette holder and her blouse undone like, when are you gonna show me that microscope, daddy? This is also another classic example of Disney using character names that are so casually unique that it's actually distracting. They say the name Roscoe one million times in this movie and I'm just like, why does he have the pen name from a late 60s folk singer? Roscoe is showing off his holographic cat. When I say holographic, I mean hologramic, I guess. There, how, what's the adjective for hologram? Virtual cat? That you can like make different colors you can make it plaid, funny visual effects. So you see there's some budget to this 2004 adventure. But then his dad comes in and I just want to like instantly leave the room. I didn't develop this technology for your entertainment, son. At least I use it. And if you want to keep your funding, then make something with it instead of just talking about it. Although the dad is supposed to be a genius, I don't hear or see him do one smart thing throughout the entire film. Sitting on this advanced hologram technology because he can't seem to think of any commercial applications for it. He's like, I didn't create create this technology for your entertainment. Now, help me think of an industry where people would pay to see a living cartoon. The only reason holograms would ever need to exist is for fun things like a cat that you don't have allergies to or virtual actors. Like, mama, the answers are right in front. Watch any futuristic movie and you're like, oh, that's why we would want holograms. Why don't you show Beta to Skycraft? You may actually be impressed, even if you're not. How was that statement confusing to you, dadly do-right? My son just explicitly told me about a problem he's having with our relationship. What is that supposed to mean? That frozen corpse that I f never speaks in riddles like this. It just sets me up to really hate the dad character. But anyway, Roscoe heads to the under 18 club, the Ear Buster or something like that, something horrible name, Ear Splitter, where his friend Samantha is the lead singer and songwriter in a band and they're auditioning to get a gig at this under 18 club. Mm -hmm. 
Like dancing barefoot in the pouring rain. Dancing barefoot in the rain? Nice try. This song was clearly written by hookworms that want to lure us onto wet soil with bare feet. <laughs> well, thanks a lot, but I've already got all the parasites I can handle living in my pubic hair. Like, I think that Sam is a pretty good, she's playing the guitar, so like, she's not supposed to be like dancing around while she's playing the guitar, but this guy who's running it is like, stop, 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 what's your deal, miss? Put down the guitar, let's see you move. You mean dance? You dance, strut. Oh. Give me some uh, Britney, give me some Jack. Uh, sir, I promise you are giving us all of the Mick Jagger we're going to need for the duration of this movie. This grown man forcing a teenage girl to dance for him so that she can work in music is not the most unrealistic part of the movie, but it is the creepiest and most uncomfortable. He's really sitting in the shadows like, come on love, shake your little teacups for us. Like, no. Roscoe tries to jump in and get all like defensive. He's sort of their pseudo manager. So he's like, hey, hey, hey. And the music guy's like, hey, you shut the f up, you little bitch. No one seems to really respect Roscoe, including his parents, but Roscoe's rude to everyone, so I'm fine with it. Either way, the next band comes on stage and we get what the kind of stage presence they want. But yeah, well, they wrote this song about you, Captain Ahab. The lyrics are like, keep your creepy hands off my shoulders, don't even try it. The old guy who works at the club, don't even try it. This is my favorite song. We don't really ever get a full performance of don't even try it, but girl, it hits. This is a good song. Back at their clubhouse, which is like the attic at Sam's home, they're discussing what they're gonna do about not having a charismatic lead. It's an inner connection to the music. I've got a connection. I write the song. They want larger than life. She's right, Sam. What the f do you know about it, Roscoe? Sitting over there with your stupid shirt? Sam is the only one here with any perspective. She's like, guys, I'm not gonna have to pierce my nips just to book an open mic gig in Salt Lake City. I don't know what the guy who manages the place is all about, but I'm pretty sure the good people of that under 18 establishment would be just fine with whatever she's serving up after school. Like, that music sounded good. She's a good vocalist. It just feels like a really artificial conflict. Like, go audition for somebody else. Like, he's not the only place you could perform. The internet existed. Put a video online, like, come on. But that's where we're landing to set up the conflict of the movie. They like don't have a good enough presence on stage. They need someone who can sing the songs and dance basically. But everyone's giving Sam this really annoying feedback. So she's like, hey, bye, bye now. Excuse me, what have I told you about entering my Avril Lavigne lounge without permission? This is where I come to pray. Yeah, 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 yeah. They use this scene to show that Raviv's character is like a really good friend. I'm gonna mix up the names because I'm thinking of Raviv, his old stage name Ricky, and Roscoe, so forgive me. But Roscoe is like, oh, we are a great singer-songwriter. Like, he makes her feel better without actually saying like, you're good enough as you are. He's like, we just gotta replace you with someone better looking. But she's like, got a crush on him, so she's like, you're right, thank you. <laughs> that night at dinner, we get a feel for Roscoe's icy relationship with his father. Or more like the father's relationship with his busy work schedule. Things are a little rough for Sam right now. Mm. I couldn't think of a more perfect match. Well, we could match some of these shots together a little better so it didn't look like you just began the meal by pulling food debris out of your mouth. I mean, she's fun to be with. Look, she can get so moody. How do you get past all those butts? Ship them off to China. They, they need the technology. We've got a surplus. It's a match made in heaven. Oh, why is that Bluetooth headpiece made out of a landline fax machine? They said, we need this gag to be really obvious. So here's the headset of a 1950s phone operator who died on the job. So of course, Roscoe is dismayed that his dad's actually not having a heart to heart with him. This doesn't really do anything to spark what he does next. I think it would have been interesting if there was a little bit more of a catalyst that incites him to go into the lab and start whipping up the perfect pop star by mixing together other pop stars. Like I get that he was thinking about wanting to do this for a long time and then the opportunity kind of came around with the band but I would have loved if the dad was like I need to figure out some project that's gonna blow them away at my big presentation or I'm gonna lose my job and it's got to be show-stopping. That way the son is like I'm gonna impress my dad by showing him I can do something he didn't think I could do and fix the band. Would raise the stakes a little bit but it's fine. We'll get there. Let's just keep watching.
Look, we don't need you to Frankenstein together the perfect singer if all it is is you combining the four Caucasian songwriters whose CD covers make you horny. That's how Ashley Simpson was invented and it didn't work. The next day, Roscoe shows up to the house and the band is auditioning new members. My life is a bad school lunch. It ain't no Sunday brunch. I try to scuff it down, but it comes back around. My life is a bad school lunch. If I were one of these kids' parents, I would be like, why is Doris from Shrek 2 wearing Dutch braids and yelling at you in the attic? Like, what class could this possibly be for? The band is just about to give up on their search when a final audition contestant comes in. Excuse me. I'm here for the audition. Oh no, Mama, this is a ghost sighting. You're not singing a damn note until we know how many industrial mill fires you've died in. But with just a few strums of the guitar, we know for a fact that this woman, Loretta, is so in it to win it. She's got all of the stage presence you could ever want from a floor gymnast. You may find me just a little strange. I like dancing barefoot in the pouring rain. That's how it feels trying to adjust your underwear in public. We get it, Betty Spaghetti. Nice hip flexion. She said, from the top, make it drop for these white ass pants. Arch my back, stretch my arms out, watch my white ass dance. But obviously, the rest of the band is super impressed. They're like, what's your name? Loretta Modern. It's nice to meet you. That's how I think people see me when I go a week without refined sugar. I'm like, oops, sorry. I'm just feeling really light and energized right now because I'm eating clean. Sorry, just my molecules are too pure and magic for this realm. Sorry, sorry. But how are you? How are you? From the beginning, Sam has misgivings about bringing Loretta, the virtual hologram, in as the new bandmate. I would be insulted too. I'd be like, not only am I not good enough to be the lead singer of this band with the songs that I wrote, but also no human on earth is good enough and we have to invent a new person. Okay, that's fun. But we get to figure out a lot of hypothetical technology here. I don't even see a projector. She doesn't need one. The computer uses echolocation to measure the room and pulsing frequencies to hold her pattern. Oh, I see. And then it must filter the visible light color spectrum through the virtual prismatic emulator that's been hardwired to the net and then installed inside of my butt. Is that how the science is working? Do I have the technology right there, the tech? <laughs> I love this outfit. Okay, Roscoe, but why did you give her the voice of Melania Trump just now? I love these outfits. One thing this movie does that I find important, if you want your science fiction to be believable, is it sets up the rules of this, you know, technology and it sticks to them. Loretta tries to stick her hand out the window to touch a bird and it kind of destroys the imagery. We learn that holograms can only exist indoors, so she needs to stay away from windows. By establishing rules like that and sticking to it, it prevents the movie from feeling like later on where they're like, oh, we just added in this new thing that helps the plot. You know, it's like you build the rules and now we'll have a conflict later that's gonna be like, oh, she stepped outside and, you know, got ruined or something or she can't go outside. You know that's gonna come up because they've established this sort of limitation. Roscoe is trying to keep all of this a secret from his dad. Impressive. Why don't we team up and work on this together? I, I, don't, I don't need help. I just think that I could be late some, some other time. They're fun. Is your child jerking off with a cartoon hand? It's your job to know the signs. Next, we meet some kid at Roscoe's school named Max. Come on, Max. Mother's head of Skygraph. Some of those brains must have trickled down. Is Skycraft the only business in this whole town? Also, just because you miraculously inherited your father's intellect and exact skill set, even though you never really talked to him, it doesn't mean that Max was born the CEO of some tech company. Aren't you, as like a genius, a young genius, supposed to know how things work? Throughout the movie, you can see Roscoe get Sam's hopes up that there might be a burgeoning relationship there, but uh, it's always cringy. Are you gonna go to the dance on Saturday? Well, that depends. Are you asking me? What's the point in asking if you're gonna be on stage the whole time? Time. He's just the Houdini of rejecting this poor girl. Roscoe said, Sam, I only want to be with you. Is my favorite Houdini the Blowfish song. Anyway, I got you a gig at the Weird Ugly B convention. Conveniently, and without any explanation, the big exciting band that was going to perform at the school dance had to drop out. I would have loved if they could have built some sort of, I don't know, show me how Ricky is a great hacker by like rerouting their flights or getting their bags lost or, you know, making their bus break down. They're like, oh, Loretta gets to debut now at this school dance because of pure coincidence. But it's all good because the crowd is eating up Loretta with her dancey dance abilities. Loretta only has one dance mode, and that is arms swinging, legs kicking, and just generally testing the limits of her Tampax Pearl Actives, like the gig depends on it. The director said, okay, here's the thing, you can't stop moving for this whole song. So she's like, scream, shout, sing it out loud. These are the things that I 
not singing about nothing's wrong with me. Nothing's wrong with me. I want you to know that when I do these arm motions, I can smell my armpits. I'm not weird when I say that I don't mind the smell of my armpits most time. I kind of like it. And that's not weird, because I'm telling you it's not. So the crowd obviously loves Loretta, and so Ricky's trying to take pictures of her, but they don't come out good. They come out like all wavy, like if you saw the videotape in the ring. I kind of feel like this would have been a cool plot point later on, like if people discovered it by taking pictures of her, or if she showed up weird on some security footage, but he kind of is just like, oh, I'll work on that, and it never comes into play and I'm like why would they introduce that it means nothing okay Loretta starts to wonder what her purpose is and I'm like so I knew she was a hologram and he like mixed together a bunch of people's voices and could make her do or say anything I was not under the impression that he built a human brain and put it into her so she's like hmm if a philosopher sits in the forest and counts the rings of thy tree like what are you talking about you're basically a tape recorder why am I here the Zetabites need a new lead singer do you know why you're here? Roscoe's here because that dad of his lied about getting a vasectomy. Like in the John Stamos episode of Law & Order SVU. Like throughout the movie, both Roscoe and his dad come off as very cold and distant until the very last second. Like if the capacity for human empathy is a spectrum, these two are just a few rungs above father and son serial killers, hanging out with Jake and Logan Paul. After seeing her at the show, the friend Max is like, you gotta set me up on a date with Loretta. And when Roscoe was hesitant at first. He's like, well, I hear your dad's in trouble with my mom, who's the head of Sky Graph. My mom's been talking about shutting down his project. I've not enough results. I can talk to her. Get him out of the penalty box. Do you help me? Okay, don't force in the phrase penalty box as though a sports reference just erases your gay summer camp experience. Additionally, how much influence do these kids actually have over their parents' professional lives? Roscoe's dad is truly helpless, so I don't know. Maybe Max's mom also considers her teenage son's emotional input when it comes to prioritizing huge tech projects. I bet you that woman makes over a million a year and she still thinks email addresses are case sensitive. That's Gables at gmail.com, capital A. A, capital G at G M A I L dot C O. We know, we know, mama, keep it moving. When I worked at Macy's, they had to put their email address in on the pin pad sometimes, and they were like, Where's the capital button? I was like, You don't need that. You don't need that. I got my heart broken watching this next scene. That's how much Roscoe keeps setting up Sam. Go out for dinner on, on Saturday. I'd really like that, Roscoe. Great. I, I figured we could make it a double date. Sam, just take some deep breaths. I know you keep getting your hopes up that Roscoe thinks of you as more than just a pawn in his virtual girlfriend adventure, but just think of the Taylor Swift level lyrics you're gonna be able to write about this emotional pain. A picture perfect picture from my memories fading. That would have been like on an early Taylor Swift album. Flash photos on the forest floor. Flash photos on the forest floor. <laughs> I am Taylor Swift. I am Taylor Swift. I'm Taylor Swift. I'm Taylor Swift. Did you guys know I'm Taylor Swift? Obviously, Roscoe doesn't really want to take out Sam on his own. It's all part of that ruse to get Max to be able to go on a date with the hologram without knowing. Also, I'm like, where do these people think that Loretta came from? Nobody is like, she doesn't even go here, you know? Why does everything have to be such a battle with you? I'm sorry, I can't be agreeable 24 seven like Loretta. Yeah, so am I. How come in high school we think we're stuck with our terrible friend group all the time? Like, if this situation, I'm like, stop hanging out with Roscoe, he's bad for you. In high school, kids could have been openly making fun of me and I was like, ah, LOL, those are my besties. And when they go tanning without me, it will trigger a year long depression. The restaurant scene with Max is just ripe with physical comedy because naturally Roscoe has to leave the table right as the batteries start dying and the hologram starts glitching out. There's a in this place. Talk to the hand. Um, oh. That's how I look when I'm trying to find the straw for my Starbucks refresher without breaking flirty eye contact with the Home Depot employee. I say, oh, what aisle is the spackle in, sir? Cause I've got a dusty splintered crack that needs immediate attention. Uh, I don't really shop at Home Depot though cause I'm pretty sure they're homophobic. Loretta the hologram has to stay with Sam for a few days cause I guess she like needs a physical place to live and can't just be turned off. Um, doesn't make sense. It's like they, she lives in this little genie jar, like a little battery pod, but it's like, that's not a thing that she's actually inside of. I don't know. Anyway, the girls are fighting. She's not even real. She's just a trick of light. And you're nothing but water and a few pounds of chemicals. Maybe a few more pounds than you really need. 
Um, Roscoe, did I just get body shamed by your customized galaxy projector nightlight? Because I will execute you and your dad by firing squad. How come in this movie, the artificial intelligence of the perfect woman just immediately becomes catty and jealous? As though that's just their natural state while what Roscoe gets to stand back and act all stoic and reasonable? This is the boy who gets chronic diarrhea when a girl wears a toenail polish he doesn't like. But sure, let's focus in on how petty and unreasonable the women in the room are. It's like, what are we even doing here? Why is Sam jealous? Like, in a way I get it, like Sam feels inferior because she can never compete with a perfect being. But like, she's actually getting personally mad at this person. I guess I'm just confused about how Loretta is a human and with free thinking emotions and feelings. Like that's where I'm really getting stuck. But I guess I have to get over that. Because it's time for another song. I was excited about the songs that I heard in this movie, but there's like only three of them, to be fair. There is the one that we just heard at the audition, the don't even try it. And then this one, which I remembered from the opening lines. So I think this was played on music videos on Disney Channel a lot, even though I never saw this movie at the time. A hidden note, a secret crush, a little boy who talks too much. A little boy who talks too much. She made sure to look right at Roscoe when she sang that part. She said, he's a shit f piece of shit. I want to smash him with a brick. This is my guitar. It's very ukulele. Also, when you're miming a guitar, it's hard to know how long it's supposed to be. Oh, wow, wow, wow. Blues Brothers, 2000. A hidden note, a secret crush. A little boy who talks too much. He's setting fire to the brush. They're like, if I wash my hair, if I change my sheets, would you notice me? That's what the song is like. Girl, I'm trying to notice you less. Stop jumping around this stage like you're trying to sell me on the elastic waistbands and your Hanes her way. She needs to Hanes her way off the stage before I get whiplash. After this performance, we get the first inkling that Loretta wants for more. She's looking out at the rain and she's like, it must be so nice to feel the rain. And Roscoe's like, oh, you like want things? And that's where I get another thing. Sometimes she'll be like, I can't fall in love with Roscoe back because I can't feel anything. And then she'll be like, why didn't you make me real? And it's like, which is it? Because that seems like a pretty strong emotion you have there. In the next scene, Sam shows up at Roscoe's house and the maid is like, you can go wait for him upstairs. And she's like, I will, by snooping. Save me, please. Save me, please. Um, does Rocco want to kill his dad? I feel like Sam just discovered some really dark, disturbing evidence, but she was like, huh, cartoons. She also uncovers Roscoe's references for building Loretta. Some gene pool Roscoe gave you. Not Roscoe taking these pictures of his friend just to label them eyes, negative 10%, face, f hair, garbage. He's going around passing judgment on all of these women when his face looks permanently angry at his father. He's like, all the time, everything. Dad, dad, dad. No, you dad, shut the hell up. The reason that the kids wanted this gig at the under 18 club is because a talent scout from a local record band would be there, the record label. So Loretta comes out of her little hiding thing and they're about to go on stage at the ear splitter. How do I look? Is my contrast set right? You look great, perfect. Why does it kind of feel like Sam stumbled upon Roscoe's secret collection of Loretta fan fiction? It's like, Loretta pulls me up onto the stage, jumping around like the girl from Lazy Town. Before they can go on stage, Sam just has to know one thing. I just have to know. That's me acting. Tell me if this is a good acting moment. This is not what's in the movie, but this is my own scene that I'm creating, and you tell me if I could be on TV. Before we get on that stage, I just need you to tell me one thing. I forgot my question. <laughs> What was I gonna ask? Before we go out on that stage, I just need one thing from you. The truth. Was that a good acting scene? Hollywood agents, you now have proof. Your girl can act. I also do stunts. I can ride a surfboard in this dream I had once. I can dance really well on that PlayStation game. What part of me you used to make her? I gave her your ears. I wish you never made her. You gave her my ears? Those are easily the least part of my body. Eh, well, they're still whole shaped. It's not the least, still too small. <laughs> it has to be said how Leah Pipes, who plays Sam, just acts the hell out of this role. I love her in this movie. She went on to later be in 
the show The Guardians? I don't remember. You guys have to let me know what show she's in. A lot of good stuff. There are a few moments where she just plays it so real, like almost plays it down when other actors might like lift it energetically up. Like other actors might get a little more angry there. Like, I wish you never made her and storm off. But Leah's performance here felt realistically disappointed and kind of hurt. So it really stands out. She said, I wish you never made her. Like it's very dejected. And I think, oh, it shows like a lot of growth or, or like progress for her character. Like she just a few scenes ago was really like, I still want to make it work. Like you're asking me out to dinner. And now she's just like, I'm seeing a whole new side of you. While Loretta is on stage, her like arm starts glitching. And frankly, I should have known this would happen since she couldn't make it through a plate of French fries without that happening. Roscoe has straight up never been able to have a successful full length performance with Loretta. And he's like, let's go do a tour. She's a hologram, a holographic rock star. Holographic rock star. How cool is that? Do you kids just think that anyone on stage holding a microphone is a rock star? She's up there singing bubblegum pop and the kids are like, wow, she's really shredding. Wow, wow, she's really shredding. Rock on. That's Owen Wilson at a rock concert. Wow, oh, rock on. Shredding, shredding the guitar. Shredder. Nope, I lost it. Now I'm just doing weird sh Whoa, whoa, she's shredding. So the team, the kids, they all love the holographic rock star. They're like, this is the future, bitch. And the talent scout is like, listen to this. We've got the future of music happening. So life is off to a great start. Loretta hits the big time. We go through a montage showing that she's famous. Roscoe's talking on all the shows about how he created her. The world is eating it up. Just tell us, Mr. Fibbs. How is it working with Loretta? Not as challenging as it was for you working with your hairstylist, I'm guessing. Next question. Once they're in the studio recording the first album for Loretta and the Gigabytes, Xenobytes? Is it Xenobytes or Gigabytes? Some type of bite. But Loretta's first album and the music producers are like, can we replace these girls who are playing guitar in the back, but Loretta refuses to let them bring in studio musicians. So she's like standing up for her band. Meanwhile, this music producer who discovered Loretta is starting to be like, yeah, yeah, this is my girl. Take care of my girl, Roscoe. Your girl? Also, girl? It seems like because Loretta is a computer program who only looks like a woman, this movie decided that means it's not a problem when the male characters constantly fight over her and who gets to control her. It's like, to me, it's weird that this objectification is being shown as normal behavior just because the woman in this case is actually an object. Like, what are we trying to say here? That women, their natural state is to get jealous and fight over boys, while the men, their natural state is to like fight over the girls and get jealous over whose girl it is? Like, like, this is weird. I don't like the gender politics in it. I don't like the sexism of it all. I don't like the sound of crunchy leaves when you're walking through the forest because I'm afraid that there'll be snakes under them. I don't like potato salad when they put too much mayo in it. I don't like those like zip ties that hold toys in the box. I just thought I would list a few more things I don't like. Most of all, I don't like this dad who's always like, oh, what is this girl you made? Can I stick my finger up her? Dad, what are you doing? Studying your creation. Dad, please, you're embarrassing her. Hey, Dad, you need to warn her before you do that. This Disney movie is saying a lot more about men's relationship with consent than I was expecting, since, you know, this is the channel I used to watch Roly Poly Oli on. Also, the, at this point, the son is world famous, right? Like Loretta as a creation has made money, presumably, has, is recording an album. Like this is big stuff. And the dad is still like, well, that's a fun hobby for you. It's like, he should be paying for this house by now. What you have done here, a holographic rock star isn't exactly what I had in mind. But she's a good beginning and now let's just move beyond it. Okay, what's our next idea, dad? You go first. Oh, that's what I thought. If you can't see how holographic pets and performers are of value to the economy, then name at least one other application where this technology would be useful. Like I promised, the military can't use a hologram to blow sh up. But I feel like if they installed Loretta at army recruitment centers, she would pull great numbers. She could wear a little USO girl outfit and do the can-can while being like, born in the USA. Ugh, oh, the dad is wearing me out. The dad just works my pussy out every time he's on screen. It's just something to look at, nothing more. That nothing saved you your funding. That wasn't her, that was you. By creating her, 
You might have might have even saved my job. Kind of seems like he should take your job because you're not really bringing anything to the table other than mature skin. Although he is making good points. He's like, Loretta didn't do this. Like you made Loretta. She's just an image. But then again, I really don't know if that's true. It seems like they could have also made part of the story. Like clearly the music industry thinks that Loretta is just a program and just an image. But Loretta seems to really think and feel like a human being. So I wonder if they could have brought in that element into the story where Roscoe has to be like, I know that we didn't mean for her to think and feel. We thought she would just be an image who did whatever we said, but somehow by being connected to the internet, she learned human consciousness. Like give me a reason why this should be like an unexpected step that makes it really hard for adults to believe that she could have her own feelings. And that has to be the proof. You know, they have to prove in the court, like, no, she should have her own rights. That would be a whole different movie if they took this to the courtroom, but you get what I'm saying. Give me that as a conflict rather than having them argue about whether Loretta has feelings or whether her part personality somehow saved this, or if it's actually just, you know, his genius. Because we don't know where to fall on that side of the argument. We don't know if she could just be emulating human emotions. It's too deep. It's too deep for me to even grasp. This is way bigger than all of us. This 2004 Disney Channel original movie, it's bigger than we could have ever imagined. It goes all the way to the top. Loretta starts getting angry, which again, is an emotion. So I'm not sure she does have an emotion. She just can't physically feel. And I think that's her problem. She, she really wants to leave the house, but she can't because she knows that would just end her program program forever and she'd be gone forever, but she really wants to go outside and she seems like she doesn't even get it even though she should know everything by being attached to the internet because that's what they said. It's not fair you made me like this. He should have made me real. Like this was depressing watching Loretta gain human consciousness just to realize she'll never be human. I already saw Blade Runner 2049 and it was too scary because I thought Harrison Ford was mad at me. Because she can't run away and she wants to go to Tokyo, Loretta pulls up a Tokyo website and then enters the computer screen, which Roscoe warned her about, said like, oh, you could get torn apart in there. But apparently, I don't know how he knew that. Like, what? How do you know that? And also, it doesn't happen. So what? It's just like artificial conflict. Hey! Get your butt out of the info pipe! Uh-oh, this is giving me that feeling you get when you need to go to the emergency room with a high fever. I can only assume that twitchy fast motion movement is a result of my brain protein starting to denature. It won't be long before I start having other sorts of sensory hallucinations. Ooh, hang on, I wanna be listening to Chromatica for this. So Loretta gets a ride through the internet on this search engine. <laughs> You're looking to refinance? We've got the lowest mortgage rates. Huh? Huh? What do you say? <laughs> I hate pop up it. <laughs> Please, sir, just let me go. Next, Loretta finds the virtual mail room. This whole like personification of the internet thing, maybe it felt a little more fresh back in 2004 when this was, you know, still a little more novel. I can attach myself to an email. Excuse me. Virus alert, virus alert. What? <laughs> I just gotta put my hand up and say, this is the most stressed out I've ever been in my entire life. I like how all of the email men are CGI, except for the two closest ones who are just wearing like bodysuits and white tuxedo pants. She outruns those virus blockers and finds the email place. Like, I don't know what's going on. I'm officially, I don't know. I got one foot out the door at this point. I need to Do you have an email address? That's how I'm gonna be flirting this summer after a year of social isolation. Trying to do my Julia Roberts laugh when I take my receipt at CVS. <laughs> Good, right? The email thing works and Loretta makes her way back to Sam's computer for some reason. I think she just wants time away from Roscoe. And Sam is like, great, well you can stay in that little bottle for the rest of the night. And then the next day, Sam and Roscoe are talking to each other. Roscoe is like frantically looking for Loretta, thinks she's gone forever. And he gets confronted about his feelings. You're in love with her. She's not real. This is real anyway. I'm real and I'm right here. Sam, I... Oi, Sam, I'm trying not to be embarrassed by your whole life, but sometimes it feels like that's what you want. Sis, you need to move on from Roscoe. Let him grow up and be the kind of person who marries his silicone sex doll. That's not your journey. After this rejection, she's like, oh, all right, well, I have Loretta. She's in my computer. She found her way to my computer. Well, then she's okay. Yes, Leah Pipes, you better nail this acting job. I love her disgusted and defeated delivery of that line. It perfectly captures how disgusted and defeated I feel by watching this movie. This is where we get a little bit of a resolution for the father-son relationship, but not a resolution for my soul or my heart. What the f 
fuck is up with how this dad eats? Well, like, why is he constantly picking out the seeds and stems from his mouth and then eating them again? The two men in this family deserve to be alone for the rest of their lives. It is busted ass nasty in this dark house. Roscoe's like, when that last girlfriend left, she said, you better enjoy eating a lot of meals alone. And mom hated you too. Like, what's up with that? It's like, well, have you ever heard the fact that your dad's an asshole? Perfections are a funny thing. Look how perfect this is. The way the crystal captures the light. Do you know what? It's not alive. When Roscoe finally goes on his killing spree, I think experts will trace it back to the dad's cups are perfect speech. Because it seems like he's implying that the only things that could be truly beautiful in life or perfect are those which are not alive. Like what point is he even trying to make? He's like, silicone can make a lot of things. Glass, microchips, but the more you look for that perfection in humans, the more meals you'll be eating alone. It's like, yeah, what? It just seems like such a dumb connection to be like, well, we work with computers, so we know that computers are perfect. So why do I want to fuck a computer? Like, I don't know. Whatever advice the dad is giving seems lost on Roscoe, who is like still trying to teach this computer program how to love him back. Touches your hair. It feels like, uh, like a violin gently playing. He touches cheek. It feels like like a flute holding a, a single quavering note high above the rest. Listen, I'm not in the high school orchestra, so why don't you save all of this Mozart in the jungle crap for someone who can read music? He's like, oh, a flute shoved up my ass, starts to whistle. And then he thinks that that's gonna teach her to feel physical touch on her skin? Like, you, you must be playing, bruh. You feel that? I can't feel anything. Guess you and I never will. Boo, crying over a cartoon lady. I'm supposed to feel bad because this guy created a sim that he can't grind on at the high school dance. I don't care. When they're at a meeting, Roscoe and his dad with the record company, it's revealed that the dad already sold Loretta to the company, which I thought was hilarious. I was like, oh, bye, thanks dad, real redeeming. And then the record company is talking about all of their plans for how they're gonna work with Loretta like a dog and copy and paste her, put her all over the moon and whatever. So that's when Roscoe Roscoe starts getting all up in arms. He's like, no, no, no. We're not doing this thing that makes sense and doesn't hurt anybody because she doesn't feel, at least we don't think she feels, but it seems like she does. We have the ability to create Loretta's of every ethnicity. Asian, African-American, Hispanic. It's great work, Joyce. Thanks for naming every major ethnicity. We only count the big three recognized by Disney's casting department. So they have to hand over Loretta, but because of Roscoe's speech, he does sway the dad's mind. He's like, no, even if Loretta doesn't have feelings, we're still gonna treat her with dignity, which is like hard to dignify something that doesn't have feelings, but okay. So Roscoe and his dad are definitely fully made up now. The guy who discovered Loretta, the music producer who earlier in the movie let on that he used to be a musician himself and just kind of moved to the record side of things to make money. He goes up to Loretta and is like, listen, you've got a choice. I'm gonna give you a choice to get out of here. All I want to do is perform. And maybe this is where you belong. On the other hand, you're handheld. With wireless web. Are you wearing the handheld? With wireless web. Yeah, I am. Handheld with wireless web. Basically, this guy is like, you can jump back onto the internet and go anywhere in the world that you want. You can escape being imprisoned because if you stay in this container, you're gonna be our property forever. They're gonna make you perform like a dancing monkey until the day the world ends. So she gets in the internet and escapes. She catches a ride with that same search engine guy. And then back with the rest of the band, Roscoe finds out that Greta has been free. You know, the guy quit his job at the record company and did the right thing. So in order to make this show go off without a hitch, they said, maybe we do have everything we need. And I'm like, oh cool. So the movie ends with Sam here learning to have the stage presence she needs. Cause that was my first thought at the beginning. They were like, you can't dance, you go to get off the stage. I'm like, can't you just take some movement classes and get a little better at performing and then we'll be fine. Which apparently she can. I liked the whole arc of her finding her confidence on stage, even though here she's kind of pretending to be Loretta. I know, I know. Wait, what Lana Del Rey album is this from? Obviously, Sam is not the trained dancer that Loretta is, so she's jumping around and I think it's funny. Like, she's like, oh, she's stumbling on stage a little bit, but the audience is still cheering. So I think they really made it clear, like, oh, the audience doesn't really want perfection, they want real. So I'm like, great, we're learning the lesson. So nothing could have prepared me for this part. Traumatic head injury was not on my bingo card of sh 
things that would happen to Sam during this movie. When she first fell off stage, I could not stop laughing because I thought it was supposed to be comedy. And then it cuts to her unconscious face foaming at the mouth and I just start losing it even harder. This movie is a spooky, tonally confusing nightmare. It is Phil of the Future meets Black Mirror. So I was like, okay, we've got 15 minutes left in this movie and we're sitting by Sam's hospital bed hoping she comes out of a coma. What a ride. I thought it was gonna be funny. Loretta comes back into the hospital since she's like a free woman now. I'm a free woman. And Sam's parents are like crying by Sam's bedside. It's a lot. She tried to be you. That's what happened. I'm so sorry, Miss Johnson, that your daughter ever thought she could even touch my sensual dance skills. I always warned her that she would never be me, that she would never be glamour. And now look where we are. She was just too stubborn. That's why the universe pushed her off that stage. Loretta is freaking out. So she looks at the EKG machine that's hooked up to her brain. So I guess it's like a brainwave machine. I don't know. And she's like, will that let me go inside of her head? And Ross goes like, yes, but it's not a computer. So if you go in there, you can never come out. And she's like, I've got to figure this out. Out. So she goes into the EKG and into the comatose brain. Ah! Uh -huh. I'm like, this movie is so high concept. I'm like, what? Samantha? Uh-uh, no, sweetie. We said Samantha, not Samara. You stay right the fuck over there in your supernatural well. Even with this movie's drastically shifting tones, I did not foresee Loretta finding her way into the further. I was a little interested by this kind of creepy portrayal of what it's like to have a comatose brain. Like, it's okay, Osmosis Jones up in here. It's broken. Your hardware needs to be rewired. That's all. All right, whatever, let's just wrap up this plot point. I think comatose Sam is starting to freak out the kids. Being inside of her brain injury is like watching an episode of Salad Fingers. But luckily, Sam gets her hardwired, read hardwired. Loretta puts the broken guitar back in her hand and has her strum it. And then life comes back to beautiful, lush grounds and everyone's happy and they kind of reconcile. Something about power is always going on. So Loretta's like, uh-oh, there's only room for one of us in here. One of us has got to leave. And then this happens. It looks like there's only enough room for one of us in here. Here. She's waking up. Hi, Roscoe. Loretta? All right, well, this is usually the point in the movie where things start getting less complex and weird, but n n n not more. What kind of Twilight Zone freaky ass twist ending is this? Is Sam trapped as a prisoner inside her own mind right now? I really got scared when I heard Loretta's voice come out. I was like, oh, it's a twist. Loretta took the body. She's like, you've had enough of your life in the body. It's my turn to feel the rain. That's what it would be if this was a dark, scary Black Mirror episode. That's clearly what Roscoe is afraid of. He's like, you're gonna let her go, right? They had to make it really clear that this this is not an unhappy ending. She's like, it's just for a little bit. You let her come back? <laughs> of course I will. What kind of hologram do you think I am? I kind of think of you as the annoying kind, so I wouldn't be surprised no matter what you did. After getting to feel the rain on her skin, feel the rain on your skin, Loretta lets Sam come back to her body and Loretta goes back into the ether of nothingness, we assume. And all is great because Sam finally gets to perform on stage. She's performing as herself and she's feeling truly herself. I mean, there's a slight personality shift after the head injury, but that's okay. The frequent outbursts are not that bad. And we learn that, you know, maybe Maybe there's a part of Loretta with us after all. Rachel's harmonies helped me out. I was the singing harmony. Because Zeta Bites have a guardian angel. Okay, let's all get out of here before Roscoe starts humping that cloud of haze like it's his body pillow. Who wrote this weird ass movie? That's what I want to know. And I also want to know what do you guys think? Oh, look, I'm starting to figure it out with my, my other hand. I'm starting to figure it out with this hand. I just have to add, I have to add that part to it. Okay, whatever. What do you guys think of Pixel Perfect? I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Also, what other clip breakdown decom movies should we look at next? Let me know. Also, thank you guys so much for helping me reach 200,000 subscribers in the D-Rama Club. I'm so grateful for the community that we've built on here and for every single one of you who have joined me for the laughs and the laughs and the laughs. So if you're not part of the D-Rama Club yet, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up to let me know that you want to see even more clip breakdowns like this. And most importantly, click that subscribe button right down there to join the crew. That way you never miss new videos from me. I upload two new ones every week, so turn on notifications and you'll always be the first to know when we're diving in with a new brain injury to look at. Also, I've got merch available and a Patreon where you can access exclusive episodes and bonus content and virtual watch parties, things like that. You guys are all the greatest. Thank you for changing my hair and touching my clothes and will you notice me? I will see you next time.